start falling in love with his word, and then what's going to happen? He's going to start changing it. Because you read the God's word, you can't stay the same, right? And when we get in the word of God, the word of God gets in us, right? And I've seen this in all three of you guys' men's lives. God has started working in your lives and doing that because you get in the word, and then you're starting to share it. You're starting to live it out every day. And that's our challenge for the three men. But for every Christian, it's for every Christian, right? That we should fall in love with the word of God with, and, and who, it's a love story of Jesus telling us how much he loves us. Once you fall in love with that, how else can you read anything else but that love letter every day? And when that love letter starts to get sinks down into your soul, into your heart, then you've got to start living like it. And living it out. Examining it. Letting it examine you and then let it be produced in you. You know what's going to happen after that? You can't keep it quiet. Because God's done something in our lives. God's changing you. God's transforming you. God's transforming all of us because the love of God has come into our hearts and he's changing us and the joy of our salvation becomes more real. What are we going to do? We've got to tell everybody. Jesus said, in the last words he said as he sent into heaven, all power is given to me in heaven and earth. And go and make disciples, teaching them, baptizing them, all that you've been taught. What happened? When Christ is coming to you guys, to all of us, the power of the resurrected Christ has come inside of us. Yes, we may be quiet. I was very bad, so I didn't want to preach 18. I, I never spoke in public in my life. But when God comes <coughs> in your life, that's good. Start changing your heaven. Not hard, but it gets easier. And then when God starts doing that, you've got to tell people. You've got to start changing. You've got to say, Lord, what's... I, I, can't, I, can't, I need an attitude adjustment. I've got to get some things changed. And then out of that overflow, you've got to tell people. You've got to tell people how much God loves them. Loves me and how much God has done in my life and what God's told everybody. And the greatest, let me say it this way. The church, God said to the church, you shall be my witness. And that's not to stay inside the building. That's not to stay inside of our little holy huddle. It's to tell everywhere we go, anywhere we go. Some of those scriptures that we read, as they were being persecuted in the book of Acts, they had to go out of the city. But what happened? Everywhere they went, they couldn't tell, help but tell, look what God had done. I can just imagine the guy, the tent makers, and they were building a tent, making a tent in Ephesus. And the guy would lean over and say, hey, let me tell you what a man named Jesus has done for me. And that's exactly what every Christian should be doing. Greatest privilege that we have at Revive is not to just keep it inside, not just hold it inside, but to be a witness. Jesus said in John 21, 20, as the Father has sent me, so send I you. And as we have gathered here and become a bond of family here, we're gonna go to the next neighborhood, we're gonna go to the next block, we're gonna go to the next church, next city, and tell people about Jesus before it's too late. You know, really can't. <laughs> and tell them, we have to. And that's what I want to challenge you and challenge us. Your job is your greatest mission field right now. <laughs> I've been to Skid Row many times, I know that. So that's the mission field. Customers you have, they may, you may be the only witness, the only Christian they see. But also, you say, well, I can't be like Billy Graham preached to 10,000 people. But you can go to your neighbor and tell them, hey, let me tell you what Jesus has done for me. And you can go to that apartment complex on Tuesday night and tell them, oh, have a Bible study. And you can go to that convalescent home on Thursdays and tell the senior citizens, give them one more chance before it's too late. And you can tell them that Jesus loves them. And as a church, that's what we're going to do. That's God's call upon our lives. And we're also going to go plant churches. Um, now, research, I helped start churches all over LA. There's over 400 un unreached people groups in LA. The world has come to LA. And it's coming to the Inland Empire. So what are we going to do? Keep us quiet? Keep it to ourselves? No, we've got to tell. We've got to share. We've got to love and care. To everybody and anybody. So I want to challenge you. Let me get on this side. <laughs> Share with you guys. Go. 
as God leads you. And, and literally, in Matthew 28, I'm not a great Greek scholar, but I know this. As you are going, make disciples. As you're going to the gas station, as you're going to work, as you're going to, uh, to watch the kids and grandkids play softball or soccer, tell them about Jesus before it's too late. We've got to cope, we've got to tell. Mm. We've got to love and we've got to care. Why? Because that's what Jesus has done in us. We've got to pass it on to the next person, the next generation. I'm excited about what opportunities of, of revive is right now. I thank God for these men. I've watched them raise up in our body to grow up and keep on growing in the Lord. And he's not done with them yet. You're not perfect. You're not perfect yet. <laughs> uh, I've said that. These, uh, Bruce, you know I've said that to these guys on this side, not yours now. So. <laughs> We're not perfect yet. But God isn't done with us yet, is he? Mm. And he wants to use us to go and tell and love and share to the richest and to the poorest, to the oldest to the youngest, and everybody in between. I challenge you to be his witness here in Claremont. I challenge you to be his witness in Laverne and, and all the cities around here, but also into the inner cities of LA, also to the farthest points of the world, because there's precious souls that need Jesus. And today is the time to do it. Thank you.